my turn. <laughs> any, many, mighty, mo, catch a frog by his toe. If he croaks, let him go. Amen. I think I know what happened to my radio. What? I'm fixing to tell a story. <laughs> I went to one of those car wash things, you know, where you pull in and spray yourself. Spray, you do it yourself. So I put my money in and I put it on soap and I go all the way around the car and, you know, switch it on rinse. As I'm going around the car and uh, rinsing it off, uh, I you know went down the driver's side and around the back. You know, and I'm coming up through the passenger side and uh, got around to the hood, and I said, uh, "It looks like there's water inside my car." I forgot to roll the stupid window up. <laughs> I mean, there was water everywhere. <laughs> and I'm go I get in the car and I'm all frustrated and ticked off and you know, ready to, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> and God says, You've been aiming to clean that dashboard off anyway. <laughs> oh man, I said, maybe that's I knocked out the sound. Okay, you might be a redneck, amen. You just <laughs> spray your car off and leave your windows down. <laughs> amen. It's good to be saved tonight, amen. amen. Old brother Joe was singing. I thought, well, old Tom's going to back up old Joe, amen. <laughs> All right, Joe, that's good, amen. I want to talk tonight about. I'm going to talk about missions, uh, about being a faithful missionary. Amen. But I never did find the word missionary in the, in the Bible. I found the word, of course, messenger. And uh, if you would, uh, please turn to Proverbs chapter 20. We'll read a couple of verses and then we'll see what the Lord has for us. Appreciate you all being here tonight. And uh, going to read verse 6 and 7. The Bible says most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. I like this one too. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. So if you're a faithful person, your father or mother or whatever, your children will be blessed. Amen. You say, well, won't they be blessed if I'm not saved, uh, well, I, I'm not going that far. I'm just saying that be faithful and uh, what God's called us to do and Amen. just keep on doing it. Amen. Uh, Brother Mike, if you, uh, Brother Ellie, if you would please pray for me. Father, thank you for your blessings tonight, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for letting us come to church on a Sunday night. Thank you for a church to be here. Yeah. I do pray for Brother Tom. You just give him clarity of thought and the words, Lord, that we need to hear out of your precious book. Yeah. Lord, help us to uh, uh, take what is said. And as messengers, Lord, be messengers for you. We'll praise you and honor you in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. 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 We're all we're all messengers. Uh, I read some one time uh, about the Puritans, and I've you probably heard me say it before. I, I repeat myself quite a bit anymore, and <clears throat> that's the way you get when you, you know, whatever you know, you get up there. He taught their children, uh, they raised their children to know God, to love God to serve God and to enjoy God. Amen. And uh, I tell you what, uh, sometimes I get to laughing with my girls and my wife and everything, and, and uh, man, we just have a good time in the Lord, and we, we're not saying nothing bad, nothing wicked or anything, you know. We're just having a good time and, and just giving God the glory that we, we're all together and we can, we can shout and sing and we can do all kinds of things for Him and he's done so much for us. Amen. And uh, I, I've been a missionary for 35 years. Uh, next month in November, I quit my job driving a truck and uh, went to Kentucky. And uh, I, got to, I got to thinking about a lot of things. And, and I planted three churches and only one of them came up. You know what I mean. The other ones just died, you know what I'm saying, you know. But 
Uh, anyway, uh, when, uh, when somebody steps out to be a missionary, and uh, maybe they might be somebody in here one of these days, uh, when you step out to be a missionary, quit your job and whatever, it's just you and God. You and him going to have you and him going to have to stay close together. Amen. And Brother Jack Wood said one time, if uh, your your uh, your life depends on that mailbox, he said you ain't going to make it. It has to be between you and God. And you say, are you preaching to somebody that's thinking about being a missionary in here tonight? I have no idea, but uh, I want to just uh, preach on tonight the best I can. The Lord let us. Uh, I went to Kentucky, Brother Estep. Uh, he called some of his uh, preacher friends, and and uh, they all went together, and they gave me a thousand dollars a month uh, to start with for a year. And uh, I was kind of dreading that that year coming up, and, and and some of them quit, but you know, there's three or four, maybe five or six of them. They still support me after 35 years. Amen. I guess because I'm trying to be faithful. And just being a missionary and just being uh, doing something for God in another country or another place, uh, that's not all there is to it. We're all missionaries and we all, uh, in a sense, we're all messengers and we all depend on God to take care of us. And sometimes things get pretty weak. They get pretty slim. They ain't a whole lot to eat. You're thinking about them turning the electorate off and first one thing and another. But, uh, you know, God's been good all 35 years, and he, I've never, never, never went without that. Amen. I mean, he's kept me going. And uh, my goodness, uh, well, when uh, we, we, we look, I'm just talking right now. Uh, but the Lord let us, uh, Jennifer, be able to play the piano, and Jill, and me and my wife, we sing. And I'm not bragging tonight. If you think I am, I, I you know. I guess I could just say, God help you, amen. <laughs> but uh, the Lord let us sing and uh, make CDs and uh, cassettes, you know, I guess cassettes before the CDs. And uh, you say, what are you, what are you telling that part of it for? Because I never did have all the support I needed, but God let us sing and we made uh, Brother uh, Aunt, my, uh, uh, Charlie Andrews, he paid for the first cassette that we made. And to make a long story short, I'm meeting missionary children they're in their 30s today that tell me, come up and they say, Brother Combs, when we went to the field, we, my, my, my mom and dad played your, said, played your songs over and over and over. I could sing every one of them. <laughs> and the missionaries I was with and at uh, Word for the World back in the 90s, uh, a lot of them are still on the field, and now their children are on the field uh, with their grandkids. And I mean, to tell you what, they've just been faithful, just been keep going on for the Lord, and just kept on keeping on. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, I want to tell you one. If you would, please turn to uh, the book of Exodus. And uh, this is, of course, you know the, the place here where uh, Exodus chapter 50 I'm going to read verses 16 and 17, and uh, I guess uh, that's it. Well, 15, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly require us all the evil which he, uh, we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph. I want you to get a hold of that. They sent a messenger to Joseph, uh, he, and they said, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall we say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sins, for uh, they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of, of the servants of, of the God of our, uh, thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him, I'd just like to say tonight, just for a few minutes, Joseph being a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, his brethren being a picture of a lost sinner needing forgiveness, the messenger being the picture of a missionary, a missionary uh, going, uh, is a go-between, the ones that are dying and going to hell and they're waiting on judgment, 
Most of them are not waiting on judgment, but they are in a place where they need forgiveness. And I believe God in heaven, when he saw his son on the, on the cross of Calvary, shedding his blood for me and you, I believe that maybe, just maybe, God wept. Maybe he did. And he said, Jesus said, my Lord, he said, my, my, my God, my God, why have I forsaken thee? And I put it into my terms, and when I do wrong and I'm not done, I've never done, I didn't do what I was supposed to do, I say, my God, my God, why have I forsaken thee? Why, why have I forsaken thee? Thank God for forgiveness. Amen. Amen. People are dying, going to hell, and the brethren are arguing about the ten toes in, in the book of Daniel. Amen. Who gives a rip? My wife would say, uh, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And I said, I don't know. She said, well, you need to know. She said, what if somebody asked you? I said, well, I just tell them I don't know. Yeah. You know how women are. They, they read the, men read the headlines and women read the fine print. To be faithful is trustworthy, honest, upright, sincere, faithful to Christ and family, church and friends. Amen. A messenger has uh, uh, have changed, but the message hasn't changed. It's still that Christ died, buried, rose again the third day. If the Bible says you just believe that and trust that, thou shalt be saved. And I'm going to tell you what, that's the same old message that saved me. That's the same old message that saved Paul. That's the same old message that saved Peter. That's the same old message that saved Brother, Brother Estep. That's that same old message that will save you tonight. If you're, not, if you're not born again, you're on your way to a place that you don't think you're going. I see them prisoners every week. We had two saved yesterday. Amen. And, uh, boy, I'm telling you what. Uh, one old boy, he, after, I, after I got done, two men wanted to get saved. They got saved. This one guy, he comes up and he said, I want you to pray for me. He said, I've been away from God and I, hey, I want to get back. And I said, what's your name? He said, Diamond. Diamond? He, he said, yeah, right here, on my, right here on my bracelet. It was Diamond. Yeah, he's a diamond, all right, in the rough. <laughs> oh, let me see. Jesus died that we might live. He gave his life that we could have life. Amen. A messenger can be uh, bring the message, but a man has to accept it. Amen. Nobody's going to hold a gun on any of those people God sends us to to make sure they get born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. They, we're not going to hold a gun to them. We're not going to try to make them get saved or false, a false uh, profession, the first one thing and another. The Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, I'll try to hurry. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Oh, let me tell you something. I'm glad I went to Kentucky. I'm glad I was there. And... Uh, it's, it's amazing what's still going on there. It's amazing. I guess uh, I said before I left the bones and Brother Simmeray, he's putting the meat on it. Either. What is that, the sinew and all that stuff? See, I don't understand all that, amen. <laughs> God just, he just keeps doing it. Brother Drummond, I, I'm just rattling on right now. I'll try to get here. Brother Drummond just took uh, some, some uh, couples down there to Buckhorn. Uh, for what they call it a uh, couple's retreat. And I talked to Brother, I talked to brother uh, uh, Drummond, and I said, uh, how'd it go with, the, with the, down there in, in the couple's retreat? He said, well, there's only one thing wrong. They wanted one more day. One more day. And I'm thinking, what a blessing. So he said, next year, he said, we're going to do another day. You know what it is? It's a, it's a refuge from the storm. And I'm, I guarantee you, if there's anybody in here, if you call Brother Simray, Miss Mandy, and you'd say, hey, you think I could come down for a couple of days and 
see the when they had the flood, uh, the the ladies' dorm, the flood picked it up and moved it about a hundred and something yards down the field. Somehow they jacked that thing back up and put it back on. <laughs> and they call it the ark. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but, you know, sometimes we think as a missionary, we, I met Brother Bob Nagowski uh, this week, and I talked to Mr. Nagowski, and she said, uh, I was telling her about Buckhorn leaving and, I told her, I said, uh, I said, I thought I'd be there forever. She said, uh, Brother Tom, she said, can you talk to Bob? If you don't know what, what I'm talking about, Brother Bob, he, he don't, he's not pastor no more. She said, she said, Bob's having a, he's having a hard time. And uh, I said, well, I'll. I'll talk to him. And uh, there's a verse I found in the Bible. uh, I I can't remember exactly where it's in Isaiah. And it says something like this. It says, uh, what more could I have done in my vineyard that I did not do? And I say pastors and preachers and missionaries, and, and there'll be a time, probably, sometimes you say, Man, what am I doing wrong? Why'd those people leave? What's going on? And some of them will be your best faithful members. They head down the road. You got, we got to just stay faithful. Let me say this real quick. And uh, I'm going to have to put my watch out here because I keep forgetting that time. I won't keep you no more past 9 or 9.30. You visitors, that's all right. I'm just lying. Amen. Preachers do lie, especially when they say I'm almost finished and they go on another hour. Amen. (laughs) In the world, there's 231 countries. These are old numbers. 6,703 languages. I don't know who counted all them up. uh, 3,400 languages do not have one preacher or one scripture. 12,520 groups or clans without a gospel witness in this world. They're all going to a place that they don't want to go. America sends more missionaries probably than any other country in this world, and yet every year there's less missionaries. You say, why are you preaching on missionaries? Why are you even talking about missionaries? You can talk it over with God. Talk it over. Let me just say, uh, our goal is to try to help people. The Bible says in Proverbs, if you write, take a note, whatever you want to do. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, verse 13, and you know this verse, as cold as the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a, a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. A faithful messenger. Not only do missionaries have to be faithful, faithful, so does the church people. Faithful. I don't know about you, but I like to go to church. Amen. Well, you say, well, okay, what's going on? Monday night I went to the uh, the jail in, in Hamilton. I didn't go in. I went to the nursing home Thursday, uh, Tuesday. I had to get up real early Wednesday. Went straight to the prison there at LCI. On the way home, I stopped at the camp meeting. <laughs> went home, got a little nap. Went back Wednesday night. Got back up Thursday. Just went to the nurse. Not just. Just went to the nursing home. Thursday and Friday, I didn't do too much. Saturday, yesterday, I went to the went to the jail, and uh, tomorrow I'll go back to the jail in, in Hamilton, and I'll just start the whole week over and over again. I'm 81 years old, and I'm telling you what, sometimes I just, I say, what am I, where, what am I doing all this? And I feel like God says, you just, you just keep going, 
You just keep going, and, and uh, when, when your time's up, <laughs> it'll be all right. It'll be all right. No problem. As cold waters, Proverbs 25, 25, that's a good one too. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. You know, some people, they, when they look at Christians and first one thing and another, they say, man, they, they're crazy. They go to church three times a week. They, they sing songs. Gosh, I don't understand all that. And they, they pay a preacher good money to rim their hideout. Just peel them bad. And they keep coming back. I don't have no problem with it. Amen. I want to be a faithful messenger. Amen. I got to thinking, y'all about some times there in Kentucky, and uh, it was getting fall, and my wife wanted some of them pine cones and hickory nuts and walnuts and all them things for decorations. And me, me and one of the young boys that come to church there, we, we went up in the hills. You know, we was going to gather all that stuff for, you know, what women do. I don't know what, you know, all that fancy stuff. So anyway, I told that little old fellow, he's about 14 years old, and I said, you go that way and I'll go this way. Well, after about an hour... He wasn't nowhere to be found. And I didn't know where I was. <laughs> and I started praying. I said, God, I don't want to stay all night in this stupid <laughs> up on this mountain. I said, well, I'll just take this big old garbage bag and I'll climb a tree somewhere and I'll, <laughs> I'll just get in that old garbage bag. And I felt like the Lord says, go down. Go down till you find the creek. Follow the creek. It gets you out. And I said all that to say this. Lost, if you're lost, humble yourself. Go down to the foot of the cross Amen. to where the water is, the living water that'll take away all your sins. Amen. And you can find yourself in a way to get home. Amen. But I didn't have to do all that. God intervened. They got something. I don't know. You hunters know what I'm talking about. But I think if you get lost, you shoot two times and make a noise. Does anybody know anything about that? Gosh, we got a bunch of... What are you anyway, amen? Oh, fishermen. Navy people. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so anyway, I hear a couple shots. Somebody says, hey, preacher, hey, preacher, we're down here. So I shoot a couple times. And, and anyway, God got me out. See, what would you tell all that for? See, sometimes we just get lost. Even being saved, we lose our way. And we don't know what to do. And, and so what we need to do and should do and have to do is we talk to the Lord. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm in a place where I don't know what to do. And I need your help. And if you'll help me, I'll do what you say. Amen. He's never failed me 46 years. You say, uh, have you ever, has the Lord ever failed you? No, but I sure have failed him. Amen. Amen. Let me go on. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, if you want to turn there. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... 
The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. 2 Timothy 2.2 2. You see what we know and what we can what we can give to somebody else, we can give to faithful men. So I turned the church over in 2002, and it's still going on 22 years later. Because Brother Simmeray, he was faithful. He was faithful before I even left. And here sits uh, the root children, not children, I mean you're pretty well grown up now, but They've watched their mom and dad, plus them, all them years in the Ukraine. And they've watched them teach other people, which teach other people, which teach other people. Most of the time, I feel like I'm the least of the least of somebody to stand in this pulpit. The least. We got a lot of preacher boys in here. Uh, my hope and prayer to you is just keep on keeping on. God will show you what He wants you to do eventually if you're not there yet. And uh, my wife, of course, when I got called to preach, she said, I'll go with you anywhere except Kentucky. You've heard me say that. <laughs> That's where we ended up. And sometimes uh, the wife will stop a, a man of God from doing what God wants him to do. And if it ain't the wife or the children, it'll be the in-laws <laughs> not wanting to take their grandbabies away where they won't see them. I've been down that road. When, is that, when I was at the missions conference a couple of weeks ago in Alabama, there was a girl's home there. And uh, there was about 14 of them from Virginia or somewhere. And I looked at them and I said, uh, girls, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what what situation you're in, but uh, I said, I can tell you what your mom and daddy's going through because I went through it. And anyway, I said, they're hurting. They're staying awake at night. They're wondering where you are. They're wondering if you got food. They wonder if anybody's hurting you. Anyway, to make a long story short, that I did that for Sunday school. And lo and behold, Brother Mike, Brother McAfee, he, he gives the invitation after Sunday school. And one of those girls came weeping with that lady that run the, the girl's home. She cried the whole time she was down there. And when she got up after asking God to save her, she was still crying. And I thought to myself, Brother Brian, I said, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? You see, if we just do what God wants us to do when he wants us to do it, he'll help us. It rhymes, but he'll help us through it. <laughs> I didn't mean it to, but <laughs> I get, you know, you just, <laughs> and prisoners think I'm about three fries short of Happy Meal, amen. Let me just say, Ananias Judson, he lived from 1788 to 1850. He said, I will not leave Burma until the cross of Christ was planted here forever. Now it's called Myanmar. I don't know if that means anything to you. But for 15 years, 15 to 20 years, he translated the Burmese language into uh, the Bible that they still use today. And uh, as far as we know, there wasn't 
anybody or hardly anybody got saved in Burma the whole time he was there. But the missionaries that came later after him had a Bible to preach to those Burmese people and thousands and thousands and thousands of Burmese people got saved. I wonder tonight if I'm not trying to talk anybody into doing anything but I'm going to go ahead and say it. They might be somebody in here tonight that God's been speaking to you about being a missionary. Brother Tim Ellis' daughter, baby daughter, he's in uh, Mississippi. Her name's Melody. <laughs> I know since she's a little girl. She's been over in New Guinea for eight years as a missionary, helping with Sunday school and first one thing or another. You say, well, women just went. There's a lot of women that just, they're not married. And you say, well, why would I support a woman going to a foreign field? Because it's what God wants them to do, and they can do a lot of things that some of the men can't do. And They can reach ladies and children that, that sometimes that the men can't do. Oh, we have this stigma thing that, you know, women are whatever. I used to say puke. Big chunks, but I ain't going to say that. <laughs> Women get kind of grossed out on stuff like that, but us men, ain't no problem. <laughs> I think I lost somebody on that one. <laughs> In Acts chapter 20, uh, Acts chapter 16, there's a man, Macedonia. And I like this, and, and you all know the verses. He, uh, <clears throat> he told Paul, Paul had a vision, and he, uh, he said, uh, vision, he says, come, on, come over and help us. And, uh, and you know the thing, where you're going to have to leave your place, come to my place, and there's more than just me. You see, being a missionary... Kind of leave your comfort zone. Amen. And that's the cost or the price or the thing that goes along with being a missionary. Brother Stahl, you're too old to go to mission field. <laughs> Besides that, your wife won't go with you anyway, and she'll kill you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you something. There's adversaries. They'll fight you. They sure fight you. You say, old man, why are you preaching on missionaries? I just feel like that's what I need to do. I don't know about you, but uh, if you're in here tonight and God's speaking to you and you're afraid how are you going to make it? That's one of the first things the old devil is going to hit you with. How are you going to make it? But I tell you what, I haven't missed a meal. Amen. Amen. You've heard my old story about the 12 pounds of peanut butter. He'll take care of you. We went to Kentucky. I bought, made sure I had plenty to eat. I bought a Went to the store and bought a 25-pound bag of pinto beans. I said, man, that's a lot of beans. You get hungry, they'll come in handy. Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm going to fix some tonight. <laughs> mm. Mama likes them soup beans. And she even taught me how to make cornbread. I can do it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I told the preacher I was going to bring him some. Because he's Kentucky fella, amen. <laughs> if 
faithful, faithful messenger. Acts chapter 21, verse 16. I'm getting close. Paul writes in Acts 21, verse 16, he says, There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Manasseh of Cyprus, an old disciple, with whom we should lodge. An old disciple. When I uh, went to the camp meeting this week, I saw a lot of old disciples. We're getting older. But the thing about it was they were still going on. Still going on. I'm one of them fellas that I don't want to quit. Don't want to quit. I want to be a, a, a faithful messenger because of the saints that went on. Saints went on. Well, I could men- mention a bunch of them, but Brother Jimmy Hood had that rescue mission in Columbus. He went, uh, he went as long as he could. And... Uh, when he uh, had his first heart surgery, I think it's the only heart. When he had his heart surgery, uh, they did it in uh, University of Cincinnati Hospital or something were down there. And we was coming back from Kentucky. Uh, we used, we'd eat, eat dinner down there, and uh, that's it. In the middle of the day, you get that dinner. They did. The Lord didn't have the last dinner. He had the last supper. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I mean, we, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, I felt like the Lord wanted me to uh, stop and see Brother Jimmy that Sunday night. So we found the hospital, and he was late. I mean, we, it was a long weekend. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 18. I'm about done. I'm just telling stories right now. But uh, thank you, Jeremiah 18. Anyway, God laid it on my heart to read this to Brother Jimmy. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. I'll be all right. And there I will call thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. I don't know how many years later, Mrs. Hood told me she said Brother Combs Brother Jimmy had give up that day he give up he said I want to go home she said but (laughs) 
when you came by that Sunday night and you read him those words there about the potter and the clay, make it again. She said, uh, he got another gust of wind. Said, I think I can make it. You see, sometimes God wants us to do things that we don't understand. We just go ahead and do them. And we may never find out why until we get home. Then we may not find it out, find that out either. But what a blessing to just do what God says. Amen. And try to be a blessing to somebody that's just lost all hope. Brother Charlie Andrews, I saw him, old ex-biker. He told me, he said, Brother Combs, he said, I've done about all I can do. I can't do much. can't hardly walk. He said, my back's bad. He said, I'm ready to go home. You know, sometimes when things happen, we just want to give up because not only one thing happens, another thing happens, and another thing happens. And we say, Lord, I've learned real one thing real good to, in my life as a Christian. Don't ever say it can't get any worse. Because yeah. it can get worse. I want to stay faithful. I want to do what he wants me to do. I don't know if this made any sense tonight. But if God ever speaks to you about being a missionary full, he'll take care of you. Amen. And you'll think that there ain't no way. But there is a way when you're with him. Because he loves you. And he sent Paul. He went thousands and thousands of miles. Either walking or riding an old donkey or in a ship. Made his way all the way to Rome. That's where the Lord let him come on home. I'll tell you this and I'll stop. Esau forgave Jacob. Joseph forgives his brethren. David forgives the house of Saul and takes Mephibosheth in. The father forgives the prodigal son. Amen. And the Lord forgives the woman at the well. If you're in here tonight and you've done something that you shouldn't, he'll sure forgive you. Amen. I'm going to close with this. You gave me this letter. This is from Miss Wheat, Miss Angie Wheat, missionary to Australia. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The church of Quimbaya bought me a plane ticket to the U.S. to visit my family. It has been about 10 years since I've seen them. While on the plane, I was seated next to a young girl. I offered her a gospel track, but she did not take it. Before we landed, she asked if we could have, if, if she could have the track. I gave her the track, and she told me she was Jewish. I talked with her a little. Please pray that she will be saved. I believe she was seated by me for that purpose. Amen. I was also blessed to hear my daughter witness some other people that we met. She she was encouraged uh, by my visit as she had been praying that she would be able to see me again and spend time together. I visited with two of my sisters and had an opportunity to talk to them about the Lord, which was a blessing. Also, my daughter found a good Bible-believing church near her, which we attended and met. 
stay, staying by the stuff, we are planning a trip to Indiana. This is a part I really want you to understand. We are planning a trip to Indiana to meet three of my great-grandchildren. Looking forward to meeting them and spending time with them. My two oldest grandsons grew up while we was in Kentucky. We didn't get to see that. Missionaries leave their family. They do what God wants them to do. And they don't get to see their family. They don't get to see their children. Uh, I mean, their grandchildren. Some of them, they don't get to see their children. And what they do is, they say, Lord, you take care of them while I'm gone. And uh, one day I'll see them again, either one way or the other. I've rubbed shoulders with some of the greatest missionaries that ever walked the face of this earth. When I went to that Bible school, uh, Bible uh, thing down there in, in Georgia, I got friends all over this world. And one of these days, one of these days, I'll see them again. Hey, preacher. Amen. There, there is a, it's never wrong, it's never wrong to serve Jesus Christ. Never. I mean, uh, Jesus Christ is the one to serve. He's talking about Brother Jimmy Hood. Uh, when he was dying, me and uh, Brother Joe went over there, and, and uh, Job told me, he said, brother, he's not, he told Joe that, he said, he's not going to see y'all. I mean, he's, he's sick, he's dying. He doesn't want to see anybody. I said, I don't care, let's go. So we go over there, and Job said, he's not going to see you. So Job goes in and says, hey, Brother Elliot's here. He goes, Bruce, tell him, come on in. <laughs> so we go in. We sit there and talk for a little bit, and, and Brother Jimmy is just an old saint, been down on the streets down there forever and a day, uh, winning souls and, and working with people that nobody else wants to work with, and he had got a work started. And as we was leaving, what was so funny about that thing was uh, Brother Jimmy said, Brother Ella, come over and pray for me. I said, forget you, man. I said, Jimmy, I ain't going to pray for you. I said, you're going to heaven. Why in the world would I pray for you? I said, what you need to do is lay your hands on us and pray for us because we got to stay here and stick by the stuff while you're gone having fun in heaven. That old man started laughing like he's just talking about getting an extra. He's seen the end of that thing as a, a glory going home to the Lord, and I'm going to leave somebody else behind. And, brother, I'm telling you what, God's faithful. I, he, I went out on those ships, and I preached to everybody that moved. I told the Lord, I said, my family is sitting back in Kentucky, and I can't get to them. You know what he did? He sent somebody to them, and to this day, everybody in my family, grandkids, the whole thing, are all saved. And you say, what is that? That's God being faithful. There's a, what you need to do is, he's talking about being a missionary. Uh, he says in Acts, he says, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Don't be a novice. Don't think you're going to go to Zimbabwe and be a great missionary if you're not doing nothing today. You know what you need to do today? Jack Woods always said, or you say you're called to be a missionary to Africa. Have you been down into Houston talking to the blacks down there? He goes, we got tons of blacks here. You say you're called to Mexico. There's tons of Hispanic people down here. You call, he said, there's every nation you want in Houston. And he said, if you're called to that country, you ought to be down there witnessing those people right now. You say, and I'm telling you what, brethren, what you ought to do is get in into it and do it and just do it. Father, thank you for your blessings tonight. Lord, uh, if it wasn't for you, you were a great missionary. You left your father's home. You left heaven. Uh, came down here. First of all, you built the place. It's yours. And you built it, and then you came down here and lived in it uh, just like we did. You were born just like we were born and uh, lived in the world just like we lived in the world. And, uh, Lord, you died a horrible death. Uh, but, Lord, you opened a door back to heaven that uh, we could get through. So you were the greatest missionary that ever was. And, Lord, uh, all we're doing is following in your footsteps. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to do that. And, Father, we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious holy name. Bless the invitation. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.